dropping into the store to pick up essential research supplies, and in particular to buy Hans Polish salami. Good morning. For a piece of processed meat, this salami carries a remarkably high profile. It's the preferred bait for capturing a fearsome creature that lurks in the darkest, gloomiest corners of the forest. It's reassuring that if you decide to take a stroll in a jungle like this in North Queensland, you won't be leapt upon by a leopard or rumbled by a bear. But that's not to say there aren't some pretty fierce predators around here, especially if you happen to be small. This is a marsupial mouse, known officially as Antichinus. But it's a mouse in size only. It behaves more like a marauding cat. Well, they're certainly not mouse-like. You know, they're insectivorous, whereas mice are herbivorous. And uh, unfortunately, it's just one of those names. They're small and they're furry, and so they must be mice. So, uh, Antichinus is a very different animal. So if you have to call them anything, I think we should call them Antichinus. It's a lovely name. <laughs> Four species of Antichinus live in the forests of the Atherton Tablelands. And although they lead a hectic life, chasing insects, spiders and the like, they're rarely seen, and even more rarely, studied. A real omission, considering they're probably the single greatest predator in these forests. Anne-Marie believes it's particularly important to study these tropical forms of an animal much better known from the cooler, temperate zones of Australia. It's fairly certain that Antichinus were one of the earliest evolved of the marsupials and probably evolved while Australia was covered with rainforests. So it presents a great opportunity to not only study them in a new environment, but parallel all that information that we already know from the temperate species. Down south, we know that Antichinus are nocturnal, scampering about the forest floors. Up here, no one's really sure what they get up to. The area is so rich in wildlife, though, it's easy to see why they like living in these parts. But what they like even more is that Polish salami. A small chunk in the bottom of one of these Elliot traps is all that Anne-Marie needs to lure them from their lairs. Under the cover of darkness, the strong continental aroma should prove irresistible. Early next morning, the traps need to be checked while it's still cool. An open door means no one's at home. Obviously, not enough salami. Mostly, though, Anne-Marie finds doors are shut. But Antichinus aren't the only animals that like sausage. A lot of native rats nose around here too. Ready. Although the many antichinus she does trap give valuable information about their habits, the main purpose of this exercise is to catch the animals she needs for radio tracking. Each antichinus has its vital statistics recorded before being slipped into its tiny radio collar. These collars, put on for only a few days at a time, send a continuous signal that Anne-Marie can use for pinpointing their location. Tropical rainforests are technically difficult to work in. The dense, wet vegetation both fractures and confuses the radio signals. This is the first time the technique has been used successfully with small animals in such an environment. And already, the technique is uncovering a whole new secret world of behaviour. So they're not on the forest floor, they're, they're actually in the trees? Yeah, they, they use all of the forest. They're not animals that live only on the ground. 
I've seen them running up trees, running between trees up in the canopy. They live um, mostly in epiphytes. Epiphytes are those uh, plants up the tree there? Yeah, that's right. The epiphytes are the things like bird's nest ferns or staghorns that um, live on the tree and they accumulate dirt and all sorts of things. So the antichinists just love getting in there and quite often I've stood under an epiphyte with all this debris coming raining down on me and I've known that the animal's been up there in the epiphyte. So this whole forest, every level of it, is there, is theirs? Yes, that's right. They're, you know, it's hard to describe their home range because it includes the ground, the trees, and then the tops of the trees. So it's, um, it really, for it to say that it covers a hectare and a half, doesn't underestimate how much the animal's actually moving in its habitat. Fantastic. It's not only the radio tracking that's coming up with surprises. There's quite a few in the traps as well. Oh, it feels big. I'd say it's probably an Antichinus godmanii. Oh, terrific. Antichinus godmanii is the rarest of the four species, yes. appearing on film here for the first time ever. Is it a godmanii? Yeah, you can tell straight away from that red oh. face. And quite a big animal. How common are they around here? Oh, not common at all. It's very difficult to trap them. And um, only a few have ever been trapped. Really? It's a pretty special event to be able to film one of these guys, and not only because they're uncommon. Now, at the end of winter, half their population is about to die. This is yet another bizarre twist in the life of an antichinus. For a while now, a strange breeding ritual has been known from the forests of southern Australia. It's been called Big Bang Reproduction, because, quite literally, all the males go out in a frenzy of copulation. Fighting between the males is so intense and the couplings so furious that levels of stress hormones rise high enough to destroy the entire immune system. The result? All the males perish. Leaving the females to bring up the next generation. Perhaps this is a way to make sure there are never too many mouths for a limited food supply. Judging by this dead male godmanai, it seems the phenomenon holds true for the tropical species as well. It's one more sealed section of a very private story that Anne-Marie is helping to open. It's really quite startling that there's still so much basic information to learn about Australia's native animals. And as pioneering tracking studies like this one continue to refine techniques in the more difficult environments like rainforest, hopefully many of the blank spaces in our textbooks will be filled in. As for these little guys with their taste for Polish salami, I'm sure there's still a lot of information they can tell us about their secret lives. <laughs>